Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm at Cedar Grove Beach Club today, and we're having our uh, annual corn and weenie roast, and we've invited nearly 300 people that have been here on the beach for years and who people that are here now. Uh, we're in front of the clubhouse, which ha houses our weekly dinners. I've, I guess I'm the longest liver on, on Cedar Grove. I've been here for 73 years. This is our bocce court, which we put in about uh, 10 years ago. And every Labor Day, we have a bocce tournament with, uh, and a horseshoe tournament. This is one of the cottages at Cedar Grove Beach Club, Staten Island, New York. It was started in the early 1900s by a group of people who simply bought tents and camped out on the beach. It was called Cedar Grove because the grove across the little street there was just full of cedar trees, just full. There are only a few of them left now. Uh, you can see by the road here that uh, we used to have the entrance be either way, either out along these houses that are by the water or the back houses. And they'd, the gatehouse was at a, a V at the center. Well, it started in 1911. The uh, Cedar Grove started in 1911, was incorporated at that time. But they didn't start building houses until I think 1920. It became officially public when Parks Commissioner Moses in 1966 or 67 decided that it would make a wonderful public park. So the city bought all of the cottages and each tenant had the option of either renting it from the city or leaving. In, oh, in 1962, they took, paid us for the houses, and then they paid the land because there was two different 
groups. There was a Cedar Grove Beach Corporation, which owned the land, and the homeowners paid the Cedar Grove Beach Corporation rent. I had been coming here since I was 11, and I was 22 when that decision was made. My father elected to leave. My aunt and uncle stayed. Lots of other people stayed. Uh, maybe one third of the original people, when Moses made that decision, stayed, and the rest, the rest left. Other people came in. Now, in 19, in 2010, the, the Parks Department, which owns it or has it in their coffers, they uh, are getting rid of t sending us out by September 30th. Hello, uh, my name is Roy Wood. I'm currently president of Cedar Grove Beach Club. Uh, my family's been here since 1954. At activities, we gathered around this flagpole and we always did the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'll join me now, we'll, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Hi, uh, welcome to the Cedar Grove Beach Club, Corn and Weenie Roast. I have nothing but good memories uh, about every Corn and Weenie Roast I've ever had here at Cedar Grove. Uh, it started back when I was in grammar school and now I am married and in this house, my own house here at Cedar Grove for over 25 years. Thank you, Cedar Grove. Hi everybody, it's Jeannie here. I hope everybody had a great day and we're so excited and I just love Cedar Grove. It means so much to me, so much to my family. I spent every summer of my 31 years here. I've, I've been here all my life. The beach has been here for 99 years and I have been so lucky to have spent 59 summers at the shore. Hi, I'm Barbara DeMeo. My family's been here for 45 years. It has been a wonderful experience. It has been a sense of community that I could only wish to other people. Lauren Roy Wood, uh, the Harrington, the Luffles, uh, the Susumas, and the list goes on and on and on. When, uh, when I moved here, a um, single parent with four children, uh, there were a couple of other cottages where tenants had uh, had winterized them and lived year-round and uh, there were two requirements for that one that you be willing to serve as a sort of additional caretaker we have a, a full-time year-round caretaker here um, but it would be just to uh, to subsidize that and the other reason is that would be that you would have to have an occupation uh, that was not nine to five in other words that you would at least sometime be here during the day and since I, I taught and had somewhat flexible hours, uh, then uh, and I was uh, I was approved, and uh, and there were several winters that we spent not in our cottage because it was not winterized, but in one that the club had had winterized. It was the first cottage, cottage A. They, most of them are numbers, but but some of cottages were built after the numbered ones were put up, so they'll have an A, like there's also a, a six and a six A. About every uh, every Halloween, that's when the weather usually started to get kind of chilly. Around Halloween, we would uh, uh, pack pack up clothing and and books and uh, and towels and linens and and dishes and a couple of small pieces of furniture, and then we'd bring them to A. And uh, then uh, sometime toward the middle or end of May or the beginning of June, depending upon when the warm weather decided to come, then we would pack all that back up and go back to, uh, to 57, the cottage, uh, the cottage on the beach. Andrew's bedroom was here, his bunk beds, and the, uh, what, about seven when we moved in, and on his, uh, on the shade over his window, I had, uh, I had painted the, uh, the times table. It was just, uh, just a couple of years before the storm that, uh, that we had moved there. Um, there were, oh, I think close to 30, 30 houses, 30 cottages 
uh, either destroyed by the storm or um, so endangered by what the what the storm did that the parks department and the city decided to bulldoze them. Our cottage was one of the ones bulldozed. Um, then we were put on a waiting list, and we were we were quite lucky that uh, those ahead of us on the waiting list who had been at the beach longer uh, were holding out for something on uh, right on the beach. So we were able we were able to get this one. Stare at the wall I know it's not there No, of the words on the page Vanish in thin The city wants to make more beach. We have Midland Beach that's underutilized, and now they want to have more beach for the city in a park. And the park that outside on Cedar Grove Avenue, they haven't weeded in two years. So they can't really, they can't afford, they haven't got manpower, but they still want to take it and get, they don't want our $134,000 a year. I can, Im I can just imagine myself on September 30th, walking through, maybe for one last time, and then waiting for the bulldozers to come in and take down what we remember. Number four is going to be the restaurant, and uh, I forgot what another, another bungalow is going to be kept up for the administration. So they're going to keep up about four or five bungalows. That's what Ben Appy wrote that's what he has planned 